Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malsberg. Let's talk about these civilian deaths. Uh, last night, our network aired scenes of the largest hospital in Gaza having to turn away dead bodies at the hospital morgue. There was no more room. You've seen the widely chronicled story of the boys uh, on the beach in Gaza who were killed. How does it strike you as a father, as a human being? All right. I mean, I, I think I'm saving that one forever because, uh, to me, that's going to be one of the notable quotables uh, of uh, the Media Research uh, Center's annual notable quotables. Uh, of course, I could be wrong. Uh, joining us now is Tim Graham, executive editor of Newsbusters and director of media analysis at the Media Research Center. Hey, Tim. Hello. That has a shot, right, of being a notable quotable? Yeah, I mean, it, it, what is, how is he supposed to answer that? You know, as an automaton who likes killing <laughs> civilians, how do you respond? <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course, uh, you know, uh, it, it, to me, it just it just smacks of uh, of the I, I mean, I, I watched this stuff. I mean, yesterday I watched um, um, uh, Mark Lamont Hill on CNN uh, call for uh, the U.S. to put sanctions on Israel. That's what I hadn't heard so far uh, until last night. Um, anyway, uh, but I, I watched this and I'm wondering, does the media not know that Hamas is a terrorist group? like al-Qaeda, like all the others, uh, or do they just not care? I think the answer is that they feel that uh, in most foreign conflicts, they are trained as journalists to always suspect that the United States is doing something immoral. In this conflict, Israel is seen as the United States. So Israel must be doing something wrong, especially when the prime minister is not you know, shaking hands with the, you know, whoever the Palestinian leader of the moment is. So, I mean, I think in this particular case, Israel is the stand in for the United States. Therefore, Israel is the aggressor. Uh, and somehow the Palestinians are the victim. Uh, in a way, you could say Brian Williams is in the same mold as his old predecessor, John Chancellor. You'll remember this was a classic notable quotable back in the day after George H.W. Bush waged war in Iraq. He said, the disparity in casualties is embarrassing, Tom. Yeah. And that's really the way they feel about this, is that, well, because Hamas is losing 1,000 to 30, well, clearly the Israelis are doing something wrong. Yeah, if only there were more dead Jews, then it would be a little bit more even. I think that that's, I'm sorry, I think that's sort of the logic that's being employed here, and that is, don't you feel bad about your success? Now, obviously, it is not the objective of Israeli's military policy to slam into a bunch of civilians. However, when they are trying to go after people who are launching the missiles or the stocks of missiles, yeah, they don't seem to care in our media that the missiles are being stocked in schools or that the missiles are being hidden in hospitals. Well, you know, now, uh, you know, I, I had a, I have a, a friend who wrote me and said that, uh, and, and as tragic as it is that 16 people and, and many of them children died at that uh, UN school, um, we still don't know who did it. Israel didn't have to, but they came out and admitted, yeah, a mortar shell landed in the courtyard of that school. They showed a video of it. No one was in the courtyard. Um, and what struck me, Tim, was the CNN um, reporter who, you know, went there after the fact and, and found the hole in the ground and they measured it. And, um, and, and he admitted, uh, and I, I don't know if, if this was picked up or not, he admitted after Israel released that video and said no one was killed by this mortar, he said that he did not actually go to the school and see the dead in the school, he saw them coming out of the ambulances. Now, I'm only nitpicking like this because I remember the Janine massacre. I remember the fake funerals. I remember the, 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 the dead kids, quote unquote, showing up twice, being carried in and out of the ambulance twice in previous wars and conflicts. So excuse me if I'm a little skeptical of the, of the Hamas propaganda machine. And yet the news media we have feels like they are, uh, th as they've been attacked by Rula Jabril and these other people who are uh, uh, advocating for the Hamas position, that, oh, the Palestinians aren't getting a fair shake. The, Israels are, the Israelis are getting all of the interviews. And let's not pay any attention, as we've just seen for Brian Williams, 
of the ferocity of the interviews of the Israelis. Yeah, no, absolutely. And now, by the way, there's breaking news um, that uh, a, a, a school's been hit. I mean, other, other more, more bloodshed, more Israeli atrocities is, is, is my point. And again, you know, this, there's, there's a war going on now. We don't know who's responsible. And Israel fessed up and said with that mortar shell at the school, look, the mortar hit here. Yeah, shrapnel could be flying around, but that's not going to kill 16 people. Um, so, I, you know, I'd still love to get to the bottom of that. And maybe eventually, once this all settles down, it will. Now let's go to, to, to Ukraine and, uh, and, and, and Putin. Um, are they letting, the, has the media let Obama off the hook? Well, yeah, we just did a study. Uh, Scott Whitlock of our shop did a study of uh, uh, several days of the coverage here since this whole thing broke out with the, with the jet being shot down and all the fighting we've had in the Gaza Strip. And what you find in all of this coverage is almost none. We've counted, what, 0.8% of the coverage featured someone being critical of the Obama administration's foreign policy. There is just, obviously, we all remember the Bush years. We remember how easy and quick they were to, to talk about Bush's bumbling, Bush's uh, doing something wrong, uh, you know, they said the th wrong things, they did the wrong things, they supported the wrong people, and uh, our troops committed atrocities. Uh, and so in, here in this case, there's just, there's no opposing senators to call out the president. Though they're not getting any space on our morning and evening news programs. And there's really not much foreign criticism of this president either. Yeah, no, uh, it, it, it's true. It's very, very true. Uh, they, there was a time period there where it got a little bumpy, uh, where they were, you know, uh, where they were out there and criticizing and, and Car Carney in his last few days and even uh, uh, er Ernest in his first few days. But that seems to have, uh, have, have, have passed us by. Uh, well, yeah. see, it's a big, there is a big difference between what happens in the briefing room, as you know, and it can be pretty tough or tense in the briefing and room. And what gets on the uh, networks, yeah. They, they are very willing to say, let's leave all that on the cutting room yeah, floor. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But, but if you go to Newsbusters and the Media Research Center's websites, you see uh, what was left on the cutting room floor, and uh, that enables people like me to present it to the public as well. Uh, Tim, thank you very much for your time, sir, as always. Sure, you bet. Tim Graham, executive editor of Newsbusters and director of media analysis at the Media Research Center. We'll be back with more, and uh, stay tuned also for your Newsmax Now update on the Steve Malsberg Show.